Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about the bubble sort algorithm. This is the first of two sorting algorithms that we're going to be talking about this week. Last time in the searching video, we talked about a simple but straightforward and inefficient searching algorithm in linear search, and then we looked at a more efficient but also more complex search algorithm in binary search. We're going to be doing a similar thing this time. This video is talking about a relatively straightforward and easy to implement but not very efficient algorithm in bubble sort. And then the next video in this week is going to be talking about merge sort. But let's go ahead and start with bubble sort. All right, so the bubble sort algorithm works in multiple passes. And in each pass, what we do is we begin starting over here on the left and we compare this element that we're currently on, which is right now the 71, with the item to the right of it, which is the 43. And if those two amongst themselves are out of order, we swap them around. And these two are out of order, right? If we're sorting in ascending order, 43 should be to the left of the 71, so we swap them like that. Then we move on to the next element, the 71 now, and we compare that with the item to the right of it. Are they out of order? In this case, yes, so we swap them. Then we move on to the next element, the 71, and we compare it to the element to the right of it, which is now the 82, and we see if they're out of order. And in this case, they aren't, right? 71 should be before 82, and so now we just move on to the next item in the list. So now we're in slot three, and we're going to compare the 82 to the element to the right of it, which is this 28. These two are out of order, so we're going to go ahead and swap them around which leaves us like this. Then we go ahead and move to the next element, the slot four of the array, and we compare this number, which is now 82, to the one to the right and see if they're out of order. These two aren't out of order, right? 82 should be before 96, so now we just move on to slot five. We compare the 96 with the one to the right of it and find that they are out of order, so we should swap them around like that, and then move on to slot six which puts us here. Again, we compare this slot six, the 96, to the one to the right of it and find they're out of order, so we swap them around. Then we move on from slot six to slot seven. We again compare the item where we're looking, which is the 96 right now, to the one to the right of it. Again, in this case, we find they're out of order, so we swap them around, which gets us here. And then we move from slot seven onto slot eight. Then finally, we compare the one in slot eight to the one in slot nine, find that they're out of order, and so swap them around. That leaves us here, and then we move on to the last slot of the array, slot nine. And now, of course, we have to stop because there is nothing to the right of slot nine. We can't compare off the end of the array. And so at that point, we've successfully made one pass of this algorithm. This algorithm works in multiple passes. So we did one pass now successfully, but of course now the array isn't finished. It's not completely sorted yet. In fact, for the first pass of the bubble sort, the only one that's guaranteed to be in the right position now is the one in the very last slot. And that's sort of why it's called bubble sort, because this 96, the biggest item, has bubbled up, as we say, from the wherever it was previously, it's bubbled up into the last position. And so now this one is set, but the rest of them aren't guaranteed to be. And if you look, of course, there's lots of stuff that's still out of order. So now what we need to do is we need to make another pass of this algorithm. To do that, we're gonna start back in the beginning of the array in slot zero, and we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna compare the 43 and the six and see that they're out of order, so we swap them. Then we move on to slot one, these two are in order, so we carry on and go to slot two. Slot two and three are out of order, so we swap them. Then we move on to slot three. Slot three is in order with the one to the right of it, so we move on. Slot four is out of order with the one to the right of it, so we swap slots four and five round. Then we move on to slot five. And now slot five and six are out of order, so we swap those two. And now if you look at it, it's going to swap with 65 next, right? So we'll swap 6 and 7. Then we move on to slot 7. Again, the 82 is bigger than the 31, so we swap those slots. Then we move on to slot 8. And now technically we don't even really have to check if slot 8 is bigger than slot 9. It's actually guaranteed not to be because we've already put 96 in the correct position on the first pass. So there's an optimization we could make here where we actually don't even check this right now. As we'll see, this is not really going to make a 
big difference to the analysis. It would change like a constant factor, but it's not going to change the big O. So if you were implementing bubble sort, you might go ahead and make this optimization. But for now, we're not going to worry about it to try and keep bubble sort simple. So we can just compare and see if 82 is less than 96. And of course it's not. So then we move on to the last slot and see that that's the end of the array. And so we're done. And now we've done our second pass here. Now, of course, the array is not fully sorted yet. It's better, it's getting closer. Now we have slots eight and nine, both with the correct numbers in the right spots. And the interior of the array is slowly getting more sorted, but we need to make another pass. So we'll go ahead and do that again. We'll start over here in slot zero and compare that with slot one and find that those numbers are in order so we don't need to do any swaps. Then we move on to slot one. See that slot one and the one to the right of it are out of order, so we'll do a swap. Then we move on to slot two. Two and three are in order relative to each other, so we move on to slot three. Three and four are out of order, so we swap those around. Then we move on to slot four. We see four and five are out of order, so we swap those. Then we move on to slot five. Five and six we see are out of order, so we'll swap them. And then we move on to slot six. Six and seven are out of order, so we swap them and move on to slot seven. And then again, at this point, there's not going to be any swaps, right? Because we know that 82 and 96 have been put in the right position. And so at this point, we can go ahead and stop this pass. So again, after the third pass, it did not fully sort this thing yet. And so we're going to go again. We're going to go back to slot zero and make at least one more pass of this thing. We compare the six and the 28, see that they're in order. So then we move on to slot one. We see that slot one and slot two are in order, so we move on to slot two. We see two and three are in order relative to each other, so we move on to slot three. And here we see that there is two things out of order, so we're going to go ahead and do a swap. Then we move on to slot four. We see that slot four and five are in good relative to order to each other, so we move on to slot five. Then we see slot five and six are out of order, so we swap them around like that. Move on to slot six. Six and seven are in order, and from there, seven and eight and eight and nine are in order as well, so we've done the next pass. We're at four passes now. Let me keep track of this. So the number of passes we've done has been one, two, three, four. Now we have to start another pass, of course, because we're still not quite in order. This 19 isn't in the right spot, the 31 isn't in the right spot, and so on. So let's start again back at slot zero. We see zero and one are in good order, so we move on to one. One and two are good. Two and three, however, are not good, so we're going to swap these around. Then we move on to slot three. Three and four are good. Four and five are not good, so we swap these. Then we move on to slot five. Five and six are good. Six and seven are good. Seven and eight, eight and nine are all good. So we've done one more pass. So let's uh, note that here we're up to five passes, but we're still not quite sorted, right? The 19 isn't in the right spot and the 31 isn't in the right spot. So we'll begin again at least one more pass, starting at slot zero. Zero and one are good. One and two, however, have to be swapped. So we'll switch those around. Then we see two and three are good. Three and four are not good. We have to swap those two. Then we move on to slot four. Then if we look at the rest of this array, it's all good. And so we've done one more pass of this thing. So we'll note that, that we're up to six. And I think we're good, right? This thing is now in perfectly sorted order. And so we can say that we're finished. And we need to do six passes of this. There are different ways to write bubble sort. One way is to do the number of passes that is like guaranteed to make sure that this thing is going to finish. And another way of doing it is to keep looping until you haven't made any changes. And so I think that's the slightly more efficient way to do it. Because that way, if you finish early, you don't have to make unneeded passes. And so the way that we're going to write this is we'll do one last pass where we'll check on zero and see we don't need to do any swaps. Then see on one, we don't need to do any swaps. Same thing on two and on three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and finally on nine. And so if we got through the entire array without doing any changes, that's when we know that we are good. Because if we make it through the whole thing without having to swap anything out of order, then there's no way that it can be unsorted still. So that's the bubble sort algorithm. Let's go ahead and look at how to code this. So here I have a bubble sort.java program. That's sort of a skeleton method for sorting the array with bubble sort. I, inside of main, have made the 
code to put in a bunch of random numbers given by a constant, which is at 25, so you can change that and play around with it. Then we go ahead and put the random numbers in between 0 and 99, I guess it would be. Then we print them out unsorted, then we call bubble sort, and then print them out again, and ideally they will be sorted at that point, of course. So we should be able to just fill in this bubble sort method and then test to see if everything is working or not. Okay, so the first thing I think we'll do is write the code to do one pass first, and then put the code around that to make us repeat passes until we're done. So the way we can do that is we can say we're going to start on index 0. So I'll say for int i equals 0, i less than the last one we need to look at, which is going to be array.length minus 2. The reason it's minus 2 is because we don't want to actually look at the very last cell of the array because inside of this loop we're going to be comparing each item to the one to the right of it. And so if we go array length minus 1, we'll look at the very last cell and then look to the one to the right of that, which doesn't exist. So we're actually going to stop on the second to last item of the array here. And we go up by 1 each time. Inside of this for loop then, we're going to do a little comparison. I'm going to say if the array at cell i is bigger than the one to the right of it. So if it's bigger than array sub i plus 1, then these are out of order and we need to swap them around. I just realized, though, that this should be a less than or equal to, or this should be array length minus 1. Either way, we need to stop when we get to the second to last one, and, and this will do it like that. So if these two cells are out of order, then we swap them around. And of course, when you swap things in an array, you can't just do something like this. You can't just say array sub i equals array sub i plus 1, and then the other way around. The reason for that, of course, is because one of them is going to get overwritten, and the other one is not going to be there anymore. So we can't just swap them like this by exchanging them this way. We need a temporary variable, so I'll say int temp equals array sub i. Then we overwrite array sub i with the one to the right of it, and then we overwrite the one to the right of it with our temporary variable. These three lines together should go ahead and swap those two array cells. I think that's something that's covered in 220, but if it's not, if that seems weird to you, then draw it out and, and, and you'll see why this works. So this code then does one pass of the bubble sort algorithm. Now what we need to do is we need to keep executing this until it goes through the entire thing and hasn't made any changes. The way that I like to do that is to keep track of whether we've made a change or not. So I'll make a boolean changed equal to true. Then I'll put a loop around this one that says while changed is equal to true. So while there has been some change, we keep making these passes. Let me increase the indent here. By the way, uh, some students sort of like think of writing a method like from start to finish one line at a time, but I often find it's easier to sort of like build things from the outside in. So you're not like typewriting on a typewriter <laughs> when you code, right? So you don't need to like start at the beginning and then go to the end of the method. I find it's often easier to like start with the middle part here, like I uh, started with just this for loop, and then build the outer loop around it. I find it's often easier to reason about things like that. So we say, we assume that we're going to make a change, and then while there is a change, we do these passes. But as soon as we begin each pass, we're going to set changed equal to false. So we set changed equal to true in the very beginning, just so we can get into the loop. Then we immediately set changed equal to false and go ahead and do our pass. If at any point inside of here we actually did a swap, we have to set changed equal to true. Then when we get to the end of the pass, we'll go back to the top of the while loop, and if changed is true, that means we did at least one swap last time, so we go in again. If we don't do any swaps in a pass, then changed will still be equal to false from this line, and when we get back to the top of the while loop, we break out and return. So that's the way that we can write the bubble sort. Like I said before, we can have made this slightly more efficient by a small factor, but we won't worry about that for now. So let's compile and run this and see if it works. Okay, if I run this program, we get the unsorted numbers are just all randomly put in there, and then the sorted numbers are in order, and it looks like it is working correctly, so I think that our algorithm here for bubble sort is correct. Now the next thing to talk about is the analysis for this. What is the big O of this algorithm? All right, I have to share with you all, I 
spent like five minutes trying to figure out why my drawing pad thing stopped working, but I was writing on it with a regular pen instead of the stylus, so it wasn't recognizing anything. Um, that was kind of stupid. Okay, luckily the pen wasn't like clicked out though, so I didn't draw on the actual thing. But okay, so, so now I'm back. So like I was saying, uh, we need to turn our attention to the algorithm analysis side of this thing and think what is the big O for this bubble sort? Well, in the algorithm, we have two loops. The inner loop does one pass through the array, and then the outer loop keeps doing passes until there is no change. So there's sort of things that we need to keep track of. One is how many passes we need to make that decision. How many passes does this thing do? The second question is how many iterations in one pass? And then we need to decide how much work is done for each iteration because we have sort of nested loops. So I think the answer to this third question is a constant amount of work. So basically inside of our nested loops, the very center of them, we're doing a constant amount of work if we look at the code. So inside of here, the actual work of doing one sort of iteration of our most nested loop, this is a constant amount of work right here. And so we need to times that by how many iterations of this for loop there are. Well, the question then is how far do we go in each pass? How many iterations are there? And the answer is that there's a linear amount. There's big O of N iterations of this loop. We could here, if we did the one optimization where we stop a little bit early, we could have said this would be something like one half n, but if you remember, that's still big O of n. So the analysis for this is gonna be the same either way. It's just your constant factor would be slightly different. So each pass takes O of n time. It takes a linear amount of time. And then the real question with analyzing this thing is this question, how many passes are necessary? Well, in this case, we did six passes. Is that the minimum? Is that the maximum? Can we put a bound on it? If I draw a new array, we can begin thinking through this question. Okay, I took all the numbers out. And so let's think about the worst case scenario for a bubble sort. Well, each iteration, you get the biggest number into the very leftmost spot. And so here, the biggest number is 96. And wherever we put the 96 in the array, wherever it goes, whether it's in the first spot or all the way at the end, it's going to end up in that last position at the end of the first pass. Let's think about the smallest number though. If I take the smallest number and put it here, it'll end up in the right spot after the first iteration. If I put it here though, after the first iteration, it's only going to be in slot one because the smallest number only moves backwards one at each pass. So the worst place for this number to begin then would be all the way over here in the rightmost position. Then let's think about how many passes this would take to get it into the proper position by the end of the algorithm. Well, after the first pass, it would move here. That's one. Then it would take one more pass to get it here. That's two. Then after one more pass, it goes here. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It would take nine passes to get the six into the proper position. That's the worst case scenario for a bubble sort is your very smallest item is in the very end of the array. In that case, it takes n minus one passes to get it into the proper spot and to finish the sorting. So we have n minus one passes times by the n amount of work that each pass takes times by the constant amount of time that we do to actually do like the if statement and the swapping and all that stuff. And all of this is gonna come out, hopefully you will see, to big O of n squared. Each pass takes O of n work and we do O of n many passes. And so we have to say that this is an O of n squared algorithm. So as the size of our array increases, the number of steps increases more than linearly. It increases quadratically using some kind of parabola-like curve. Hopefully that all makes sense. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the merge sort algorithm, which is a bit different. 